the trial date has now been set in the federal election subversion trial for Donald Trump. Let's talk about the case and the politics surrounding it. Here with me now, S.E. Cup, CNN political commentator, Jamal Simmons, former communications director for Vice President Kamala Harris, and Jeremy Saland, a criminal defense attorney and a former Manhattan prosecutor. Jeremy, let me just start with the, the basic reaction that you have to this March 2024 uh, election uh, subversion trial date. Is that too soon, too far away? What do you make of it? Jack Smith is no doubt happy, although he certainly could be happier. He's done a good job of limiting the, the scope of this indictment solely to Donald Trump so he can move it efficiently forward. And the judge recognizes that and recognizes the importance of this trial in terms of the public needs to know and have an answer. And Jack Smith and the court also was clear that there's 47,000 documents that really are pertinent or the most important. So this entire spectrum of documents, you're hearing millions and millions of this material, is not everything that should hold them back. So the judge is doing a good job. But I would expect there's a potential appeal waiting in the wings down the road. So just because for us lay people here uh, that aren't lawyers, 47,000 pages of documents, that is a lot, that is not a lot, that is manageable. What's your take? It's all relative, right? 47,000 could be a lot to some and a little to others. But he has the team and the ability, and especially with today's technology, to identify certain things that he's looking for. But what about Trump's legal team? Do, That's what I'm referring you to. You know, Trump sorry. does have the team. Right, right. The, the point is he has the team to go and examine those documents. He knows what he's looking for and what they're about. And some of these documents, if I understand it correctly, are things that he should already have from social media, for example, and internal documents on his own. It's all not fresh new documents. Right. It's information. A lot of it is stuff he generated. I see. Um, so Trump's next campaign appearance, we're told, uh, is with South Dakota uh, Governor Kristi Noem. It's a rally there on September 8th. Uh, Noem uh, deliberately, we're told, chose not to run for president because she was convinced Donald Trump was going to be the nominee. But according to uh, Washington Post poll, Trump is the only candidate to actually lose support following last mm. week's debate D do you think that it's it is do you hold do you agree with governor Nome that Donald Trump is going to be the nominee or do you think it's still a chance that it could be someone else no i think Dom donald trump is going to be the nominee because i haven't seen the willingness the fortitude among the other uh, candidates to really take him on and make a thing out of this unprecedented um, turn of events, these four indictments, the fact that he was probably going to be in prison at some point over the next year or two, um, they really aren't touching it that much. Uh, so yeah, I think he'll be the nominee. But he's in a bit of a bind as he campaigns because all he wants to talk about are the indictments and how they're coming after me, so they're going to go after you. He doesn't want to be talking about policy. But that's the exact opposite of what his lawyers are going to want him to do. Right. So every campaign event that he's going to go to, I imagine his lawyers crying in a corner somewhere, just, you know, bracing for this inevitable, um, you know, bad, bad move. I mean, meanwhile, we're told uh, that House Speaker McCarthy uh, is preparing uh, for an impeachment inquiry. Uh, and we're also told CNN is reporting that there is not yet unanimity among House Republicans for that. Regardless of, I mean, I don't even know what the impeachment inquiry is for <laughs> yet, and I don't think they've decided yet. It's right? an impeachment in search of a cause, of a reason. But, but regardless, um, I can't imagine Democrats are excited about anything having to do with airing Hunter Biden's dirty laundry and everything having to do with the millions of dollars he took in, the influence campaign alleged, et cetera. Nobody wants to talk about Hunter Biden. Well, Republicans do. <laughs> no <laughs> Democrats want to talk okay, about Hunter yeah. Biden. But you know what? I bet you also a bunch of people who are just watching the news don't want to hear about it either. Because a lot of people in America now have people in their families who've had drug addictions and have gone through tough times. And so here's the difference between um, what the, what's happening with the Bidens and what's happening with Trump. Everybody said Hunter Biden had a problem. We know it was a problem and he's trying to rectify his problem. Hunter Biden was willing to go to court and admit to some of the problems that he's had. Donald Trump has never admitted to a single possible thing that he's done wrong. And I think that's part of the issue where people just don't want to hear anything else from Trump about this. And they're willing to say, you know what, Hunter, he was a problem, but it's not the president's problem. But listen, I mean, you, gotta, you have to keep in mind that as galvanizing as Trump's indictments are for him, um, you have to wonder if it will be just as galvanizing for Democrats if Republicans pick this impeachment fight and suddenly the stakes are higher. I, you, might, you might be a little careful with that, Republicans. Jeremy, I want to ask you, Mark Meadows, a former White House chief of staff, um, testified today that his executive branch duties regularly included uh, talking to state officials. And he's saying that this is one of the reasons why the, the case in Georgia should be moved from Georgia to federal court 
because this is part of his federal duties as White House uh, chief of staff. And that includes when Trump had him arrange a call with the Secretary of State of Georgia to, quote unquote, find 11,780 votes so that he won Georgia. Do you think the, the judge is going to be inclined to agree? Yeah, this is a, a classic example of what we call you admit what you can't deny and deny what you can't admit. He's in a stuck spot. He has no option but to go that route. And it's, it shouldn't be lost in anybody else that he is the one who testified. There was no other evidence on his behalf to corroborate what he was saying. He had to go that route because otherwise it's a Hatch Act violation. And, you know, he's darned if he does and darned if he doesn't. He's really in that unenviable position. And no, to answer your question directly, I think he loses, period. And I think it's a, a white knuckle day for him. I mean, he must be stressed beyond belief, and rightfully so. All right, Jeremy Saland and S.E. Cup and Jamal Simmons, thanks one and all for being here. Really appreciate it.